Well, thanks for your patience. We've had a couple setbacks and then the holidays put everything behind schedule. But today's the day. We're gonna wrap up this machine and start making some test cuts. Let's go. I was banging my head last night trying to figure out why I couldn't import my 3D model into the tube cutting software. And uh, eventually it occurred to me that um, Skyfire sent me one other piece of software, this tube kit nesting software, which I totally forgot to install before. So let me get that set up. All right, looks like we need to find uh, language settings again. There we go. Okay, let's try uh, importing a file here. Okay, there we go. Awesome. Uh, so it looks like I need to set up the parts in here and then I can import them into the other software. So this TubeKit software supports step files, which is perfect. Um, I can just export it right from Fusion. I've modeled up a quick first test part with the square hole on each of the four sides. I've been making some test cuts and uh, I'm starting to understand the software and the workflow. Um, that's going really well. However, during this process, I've discovered two mechanical issues about the machine that we need to address before I can move on. First, I was checking the concentricity of my chuck. And I don't know if you remember, but I just kind of hastily put it all together, uh, making sure it was mechanically working. And I didn't really uh, ever measure anything to see how uh, concentric it was. So. I've discovered it's about 0.75 millimeters out on the x-axis and about one and a half millimeters out on the z-axis. So that means basically I need to disassemble the whole thing, get back down to the, this first layer, then add my hardware back on and check it, then add the second plate on, make sure it's concentric, check it again, and then finally the rollers and the tube. So i um, not looking forward to that, but it's a step that's just gonna have to be done if I want accurately cut parts. You can see here, like on my test piece, like one side of it will be perfectly centered, then on the other side, you can clearly see that it's out. So yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, take a step back here before we can move forward. And the second issue is the Stelrin gear rack. We were all suspect whether it was gonna be stable or not for this application. And I can now validate that no, it is not. My workshop's heated, but um, the temperature outside has drastically dropped to like four degrees. And I came out here to run the machine and I noticed there was about a millimeter to two gap uh, within these four pieces. So that's just not gonna work. I temporarily taped a little piece of uh, spacer metal there to uh, fill up that slack. But um, yeah, I'm gonna have to change that out to a steel gear rack, which I've ordered. And it's also going to mean having to modify this motor mount plate, which shouldn't be too big of a deal. I've disassembled the outer layers. I think I can leave the rest attached here. Um, I can access all of these bolts, so I will loosen all those and make sure this initial base plate is concentric before uh, we move on. All right, after making those adjustments, um, I started out with uh, 1.5 millimeters deviation between the two rollers, and now it's down to 0.1. So uh, that's a major improvement. I'm gonna get this plate back on here and centered to the best of my ability. All right, after the adjustments, I'm within 0.1 millimeters deviation on the z-axis and it looks spot-on on on the x-axis. So uh, 
Let's get in some square aluminum tube here and we'll take some measurements. After these adjustments, I'm about 0.25 millimeters difference on the x-axis and about 0.7 millimeters on the z-axis. So uh, it's a lot better. It's still not perfect. Um, I'm not sure how perfectly straight an aluminum square tube is. Um, it's the, the best thing I have to test at the moment. The software does have some centering functions um, where it can use the nozzle to uh, check for center and create offsets uh, according to that. So um, yeah, let's go with it and we'll see how accurate we can be. I've designed a new motor mount for the y-axis, so let's get that machined. My new y-axis motor mount plate is machined, so now I just need to remove this side panel and uh, mill in the features that'll allow me to screw this in. I've got this rear gantry side plate removed uh, so I can modify it. This is going to attach somewhere like that so I need to drill the six holes and then just cut off this excess here so let's run. Let's get these six holes tapped for M5. I've got the modified side plate reinstalled. Now let's get this motor mount plate back on here. Okay, I've got the motor reinstalled. Now there's proper clearance for the new gear rack. That took a couple weeks to arrive, but now we've got some proper steel gear rack. So let's get this installed. I 3D printed a little alignment tool for the gear rack before we tighten them down. So let's try it out. I can just use my little cutoff piece of the gear rack to line up these two teeth here. And let's get this motor up into place. Slide up. See how it meshes. <laughs> Alright, that feels pretty good. Let me get this drag chain hooked back up. Alright, it seems like it's working well. Let me uh, retest for backlash and then we will resume cutting. It looks like the backlash is a little less. It was 0.2 millimeters before. Now it's about 0.15. So I'm just going to update that here in the software. I've got my one inch square aluminum tube back in here. Let me show you the centering function. Here you can see the plane deviations that it came up with. So let's apply those and try this again. So after those adjustments, the uh, features look much more centered now. So I think we can move forward with this. Let's try something else. Let's try cutting out this one by three rectangular tube. That's got like an eighth inch wall thickness. Um, we're going to use oxygen this time, so I'm going to have to switch out to this uh, 1.2 double nozzle. So let me get this set up. I've got my material loaded. I've got some initial cutting parameters set in here. So let's try it out. I'm just going to try to cut off a slice here and see how my parameters are. Let's give it a go.
I've been doing some test cuts and trying to dial in the parameters and I think I'm getting close. Um, I think I want to try cutting out a test part. So let me show you the file setup process. I've just created this test part in Fusion with some features that we're going to cut out and I've exported the step file. Okay, let's open up the tube kit software and add from file. And there's my step file. Open that. Um, this is going to be the top surface, so I think I need to reorder this so it cuts out these features first. Sort by face. Okay, there we go. Now it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then eleven to cut it off. Alright, that looks good. Now let me add some lead lines. Alright, that looks good. Okay, now uh, I'm only going to cut off one part, but I still need to set up this uh, pipe length. Uh, you could nest multiples of these parts if you want to cut out a bunch of them. Alright, so now we can export this file. Alright, now we can go back into 3D Cutahead software. import my file. Alright, so there it is. Uh, I'm going to just apply the same settings I use for my test cuts. And let's give it a shot. Let's see what we got here. I think it's still really hot. Yeah, oh yeah. Let's see if these features will just pop out. Oh yeah. Everything looks pretty good, except I can see I should have run the auto centering function before I cut this. I don't know how well you can tell, but these features right here on the sides are supposed to be centered. You can tell they're pretty far off by like a millimeter or two. Same on this side. Um, but everything else looks pretty good. Let's uh, try cutting out some round tube. Since we're going to be doing round tube, I need to switch out to these other vice clamps. This tube kit software has some nice functions if you need to do simple parts. Uh, if I click on this add standard parts, we'll do circular. Uh, 48.5 is the diameter of the tube I just loaded. Um, we'll just set it to 2 millimeter length and the tube thickness is 3.6 millimeters. And it'll create the cut paths here. Um, we can add a lead line. And what we'll do, we'll just uh, deactivate the second ring. That way it just does a single cut while I play with the parameters. Um, so now we just need to uh, export this. All right, now if I go into the 3D Cutout software, we can import that file. Let's select the second line here and put it to no cut. All right, so it's just gonna cut a single line around it. So let me put in some parameters here. We'll give it a test cut. All right, that wasn't bad. 
I model up a quick test part for round two with a few features. Okay, I've set up a test file, so let's give it a try. I was able to pop out the features. It looks pretty good. It looks like I needed to cut that a little bit wider. It won't quite seat nicely to weld. But uh, yeah, that's a good start. I think I'm ready to wrap up this video series. Like any new machine, it's gonna take me some time to play with the parameters to get optimal cut settings. But I think we're off to a good start. Stay tuned, Skyfire sent me this two kilowatt laser welder, which we're gonna check out next. And I'm really excited about it. It's really gonna to bring together my flat sheet cutting machine and my tube cutting machine and allow us to fabricate some parts for some upcoming projects. Well, I'm pretty happy with how the machine turned out. I've seen some really cool videos of tube cutters cutting out uh, features for rounded bends, um, like hinge bending and tab and slot features for assembling, which I'm really excited to try out in future projects. And speaking of projects, I have a few ideas in mind for the upcoming year. Um, one, an SLS metal 3D printer. Uh, it looks really challenging, but that's the kind of project I like. Two, an electric go-kart that I can ride with my boys. Uh, it'd be really fun to use the tube cutter and the laser welder to assemble the frame. Um, that would probably be a good summer project. And three, a high-speed CO2 laser cutter. I've seen a lot of basic builds online that use the glass tube, but I was thinking um, an RF tube and AC servos to make it super fast. Um, so that looks like fun. Let me know down in the comments if you have any project ideas for 2025, if you like any of my own or if you have your own ideas. I know somebody's gonna ask, so this machine cost about 13,000 to build. If you wanna build your own, I've uploaded a lot of information on my Patreon page, the bill of materials, a laser source wiring diagram, the full 3D model, 3D printed part files, extrusion cut list, laser cut part files, cutting parameters, and user manuals. Patreon members also have access to our private discourse forum uh, where I try to answer questions you might have and users share ideas and their machine builds. The chuck build was the most difficult part of the project, but uh, now you don't have to worry about it because I partnered with Skyfire and a third party manufacturer and they're offering my design for sale on their website. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. I've created a shared project on PCBWay's website where I've uploaded all of my custom machined aluminum parts. So um, if you want to order them through PCBWay, you're welcome to do so. I've also included all of the drawings for the whole tapping so you can order your parts tapped. I'll leave the link in the description. I want to thank the three sponsors who helped make this project possible. Um, thank you to Skyfire for sponsoring the laser head and the gas control system. Uh, don't forget, you can use my discount code if you need to order some laser parts. Thank you to Leadshine for sponsoring all the AC servo motors and drives for this project. And thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring most of the custom milled aluminum parts for this project, which are available to be ordered on their website. And of course, thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your ongoing contributions and making these projects possible. Thank you guys.